Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, I've been talking about these jelly plates recently and um, today I'm going to introduce you to them for those of you who haven't heard of them because they're a really, really interesting way of creating, uh, adding a new dimension to your art, I think I would probably say. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the plate a little bit and then I'll show you some of the process that I've been going through with it. Um, I was curious because I'd seen it being used so much on YouTube by so many people in so many branches of creative art, um, people using it for so many different kinds of things. But the one thing you don't see very often is people using it for watercolour. So I want to um, show you that you can actually use it to create something with watercolour. It might not be to everybody's taste, but um, I was quite pleased. I managed to produce a birthday card for Tamsin actually using this. The very second time I tried to use it, it worked well enough to be able to actually give it to somebody, which is which is great. Now this is just a small one. It's um, six inches square. Um, it cost me 20 euros. It will cost you about $20 if you buy one online. And I've subsequently found out that you can, excuse my inky fingers, um, you can make them and they're easy to make and they last for ages. I thought that they would be something that would kind of um, degrade very quickly if you made it yourself, but apparently not. People have said they've had them for years. Um, and what you do is you get some um, gelatin and glycerin and uh, then you can just uh, kind of let it set and you get one of these and you can keep them for quite a long time. And if they become irregular in shape, you know, if they get dented on the top or something, all you have to do is melt it and re-pour it and it will come out again um, the way it was in the first place. So that's very clever. But anyway, just to get started, I thought I would get myself a ready-made one. And so here it is, and this is it. It's, um, yeah, it's a rubbery slice of rubbery plasticky stuff. Blah, 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 blah. It's very blubberlobbly, flubberlob. Um, yeah, and it's more resilient than you would think. People think that they're going to have to be super careful with it, but you can wash it in soapy water. You can do all sorts of things with it. There are certain things you can't do, like you can't use um, photographic paper, the shiny stuff on it to use to pick up your print, because apparently that will erode the surface. Um, and you don't want to use anything sharp on it because that would cut it. So that's uh, a couple of sort of um, restrictions there. But uh, in general, um, they're pretty, pretty tough things. Um, so, 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 given that, I'll show you what I did first. I, um, I'll show you what I did first. What you do first is you take a piece of paper about the size of your plate and you put it underneath like that and you put that on top and the reason why you do that is so that when you do your print which you're going to do roughly the same size you can line up the paper on top of the paint that you've put on the plate and you can line it up by matching the corners of the one underneath okay so that's how you do that i think that's a neat trick somebody showed me so what you do is you put um, paint on here. Now, everybody says, well, you've got to have one of these, which is called a brayer. I've got two of them. I don't know how I came to have them. They appeared in my studio one day. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, you don't have to use a brayer though, but I, I'll show you how to use that in a second. But you can use a brush. You can put the paint on there with a brush or your fingers or whatever you like. You don't have to use a brayer. I know this because I've tried it. Um, but, um, and you can, you can, if you use acrylic, it's probably the best thing to start off by using acrylic. And I don't have any of the thin, light uh, acrylic paint that everybody loves to use. So um, I'm not gonna go out and buy any because I'm not an acrylic painter, so I'm not gonna do that. But I do, I, in actual fact, I probably do have some of that stuff, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. This is just ordinary acrylic paint. Eesh. 
and um, ordinary. <laughs> what you do is you put some on the on the plate and then you uh, you hold it firm and you just spread it out. And this looks terrible at first, but it's because this, this paint is pretty rubbish and it's partly dry, it's got quite a lot of imperfections in it, but I like imperfections. Um, but you can roll most of that out, but those imperfections will give you a more interesting effect. And you just spread out your paint like that with the brayer, if you're using a brayer, or with a brush if you're using a brush, but the thing is not to make it too thick. If your brayer slips when you're um, putting the paint on, if it slips around all over the place, that means you've got too much paint. And what you have to do then is you run some of the paint off onto a piece of paper that you keep beside you like this. And then you come back and you, you can pick up a bit more of the paint, you see. So now we've got a nice light coat there. And what you can do then is you can either do this, you just, this is the very first step, you just print that, put that paper on top and rub it all over with your hands. You don't need to use the brayer to do this bit. I thought you would have to, I thought you'd have to press really hard, but you don't, you just lightly, um, this is such a great thing to do with children, I almost wish I had children to do it with. And then you just remove the piece of paper and you have your print. Okay, and then you still have a little bit of paint on there, so you could pull that one a second time and you'd have an even lighter one. So we'll do that and it will be light, it'll be very light. And this is also known as a way to clean your plate. You should be able to get most of it off like this. And then you pull it up again and you've got another nice thin layer. Now, as a watercolorist, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, ooh, that could be a nice background, couldn't it? And so you might say, ooh, what would I do with that? I could, um, I could use that as a nice background. And it might be even better, you might say, if I put a second color on it, another green. So I'll just put a bit more paint on. Any old colour will do. And uh, you, if you're using a brayer, you just go all over willy-nilly like that and you can get a kind of splodgy pattern. Best thing to do is not to be too even about it. Clean off your brayer like that in between and then you can take the same piece of paper. By now, because it's acrylic, it's dry. And you're going to place it more or less roughly in the same place, if you can see, and then you do this. And it's, this is so exciting, it's such fun. So I'm just gonna do these two with acrylic and then I'm gonna show you how I was doing it with uh, watercolor. This paper, by the way, is just sketch paper. Okay, so now you pull that off. And now we have a nice blotchy, um, design that you could do something over. And I've done quite a few of these because once you get started on this, you can't stop. And um, these are just, I think I had three or four different colors on these. That was one where there was some paint um, that was dry and that one as well. And all of these, wouldn't they make good backgrounds? And uh, what, the other thing you can do is you can use a blunt tool to scratch into the paint before you pull the print and you get these kinds of designs when you pull it and something like that, you see. And then with once you've got this kind of a background that you're going to use, you can draw into it. And this is actually, I was using just ordinary, um, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, water pens. What do you call them? Um, brush pens you know, uh, these things, these things here, the poetic doodars, they work perfectly well over, um, over acrylic and you can do a design like that. So yeah, so that's exciting and thrilling and all the rest of it. So I'll take that away, those two, I can use those for 
backgrounds for something or other. And we'll put them over there. Um, now, so the next thing, I think I might take that off because I think that's making it slip a little bit. You live and learn, you know, you live and learn. Now I'm going to uh, show you what I do in order to make it work with watercolour. And here in my uh, little Meaden palette, this is one of the, the famous Meaden um, ceramic palettes, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to put some washing up liquid like that. And that is the key to the universe, basically. And what we're going to do is mix that with some paint and then we're going to paint onto there. And we're going to get something initially like this and then hopefully like this and we'll gradually improve our technique or get worse or get better. And then we'll use those um, for backgrounds in these various and assorted different ways. You see, you can do all sorts of things, some better than others. So let's see what we get today. Um, so let's, I don't know, have some turquoise, a little bit of that, and that just breaks up the surface tension. And it's, it's, you know, I am not an expert at this. I have not done this before this week. So, but I I'm t totally want to know about how to do this because I'm greedy. I like to have all the information. I don't just like to have some of it. So I don't remember what I did before. So I'm, I'm, um, coming in with a new approach. And so let's get some green going here, maybe. We're learning. We are learning. And the thing is, don't use too much water, but just use plenty of washing up liquid. And I don't know what we're gonna get. So this should give us some kind of a subtle background, hopefully. We don't know yet. So we put that on there like that. Press it down all over. Like I said, you can make your own jelly doodah. You just need some gelatin and some glycerin and Bob's your uncle. But, uh, there we are. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? That's watercolour. That's not acrylic, that's watercolour. And we have a beautiful all over pattern that would make a good background for something. And then we can pull it again. I have pre-cut these pieces of paper. And these backgrounds, they would be jolly good for um, any kind of crafts that you do, you know, whether it's a junk journal or, I don't know, um, cutting up for collage and things like that. Yeah, so that's, that's not particularly fascinating, is it? So we can use that piece of paper again. So I'll just uh, mix up some, some more paint. Um, And you can go over the top of that one as well. Now, you're obviously not going to get such an intense, well, you, I suppose if you use much more paint, you might get it more intense. Let's, let's do the next one with a lot of paint and see how dark we can get it to go. So there we are. That's what we're getting. And don't forget, this is just experimental. Um, we don't know what we're doing yet. 
I just want to find out whether or not this is going to be a useful addition to my creativity. That sounds very posh, doesn't it? Some of these colours aren't going to work terribly well, so I'm just going to get some, let's get some yellow, some yellow. Uh, no, that's yellow ochre, let's get some proper yellow. Oh, that's acrylic. That's not the right stuff. I was trying to do it with watercolour, so let's try pale yellow. Let's see what happens. Okay, and one more go. And when we're finished with this, I'm going to go ahead and do a painting on one of these backgrounds. Yeah, so there we are. Watercolour does work. You get lovely um, watery lines. It makes me feel like I really want to improve that, you know. And, uh, and working with this probably could take up a lot of my time. I don't know how long these will take to dry. You start doing this and you start thinking jungle leaves, jungle leaves. Lovely dark blues. So good use of the square a uh, flat brush. Okay, so I sort of the other thing as well about um, using uh, watercolor, it doesn't dry as quickly. If you live in a dry climate, you might find you have to use a retardant on the um acrylic because it dries too quickly okay i'm not going to fuss with that anymore we're going to just pull that on i'm not pressing very hard on on this just making sure it touches everywhere and there's no bubbles Well, that's nice. That's really quite nice. And I'm going to do another one, which will be lighter. They call this a ghost print. I suppose that's self-explanatory. I do recommend you give this a try if you possibly can, if you've got the space and you feel like having a play. I think it's quite inspiring because when you've tried this, it does give you ideas for what you might want to paint next. Yeah, this is interesting because the second time, often with the acrylic, the second time round is, is better. But I've been finding really that with the watercolour, the second pull is not particularly exciting, although it could work well as a background um, too, because I've got these ones here. These, these ones were, were done without washing up liquid. Um, 
just very thick paint. Maybe I'll do one of those without the washing up liquid. Let's just try that. Let's try some really thick, dark green. And I'll put it on top of this. Okay, let's see what that does. I think the element of surprise, it's like every pull is Christmas. The element of surprise. Okay, so that could well be turned into something interesting, I think. I think that could become a leafy kind of create creation and I'm going to use it again I hope people aren't too bored this is what they call outside of your niche which means you're doing something not the same as what you normally do and we're as YouTube creators we are told don't do that do not leave your niche Stay in your cubicle. Stay in your cubicle. Um, but hey, sometimes, sometimes you just got to go. Okay, let's try that. I want to put that on top of another one. What shall I put it on? What shall I put it on top of? Uh... Maybe I'll put it on top of this one. That one was um, acrylic, that background. So this is mixed media. Yeah, it didn't quite line up, but that's dramatic, isn't it? And then you can do another one on top of that. You could, um, we could take some yellow. Um, where did the yellow go? There we go. Okay, and go again. Oh, wow. Now we're starting to get somewhere, aren't we? Wouldn't you love to doodle on top of that? And then you could put a little mask around the outside edge and uh, you might have something really, really exciting there. Hmm. Okay, and this one also is, oh, it looks like, doesn't that look like fish? It looks like underwater, it looks like a beautiful cuboid fish tank. With lots of fish, too many fish actually, and some rocks and things like that in it, doesn't it? Couldn't you just trans, Trans, uh, trans, mute, transform, transform that into a tank of fish, totally. Okay, um, let me see, shall I do anything else? What haven't I said? Um, nice mess here in my palette, but this palette works really well for this because you've got all these options, but all of which have turned out to be green. Um, so what I could do, so as not to waste, the paint that I've got here, I can just put some paint on and then I'm going to uh, use the brayer because why not? Or maybe I won't. Or maybe I will. I haven't, I haven't tried the brayer with watercolour, have I? 
So I should do that. I might have to undo what I do, but... Oh, gosh, it lifts it all off. There you go. Well, that's interesting. No, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to lift that all off, but I have. So we will print that now. I've used up all my small pieces of paper now. Go with the bigger one. This is time to stop, you see, I've used up all my paper. So now we have, oh, well, that's okay, isn't it? A beautiful green background onto which we could put some black. Let's, uh, let's do something in black. The leaf pattern is always uh, easy, isn't it? The, um, like I said, the um, flat square brush is quite good for doing uh, leaves. The other thing is, I think, if you make a mistake, like I just did, I think you can wipe it off. Okay, before it dries, we'll quickly go in again with this. A bit difficult to line it up because it's too big. There we are. Okay, well that didn't pull particularly well. I don't think I used enough paint here and perhaps a bit too much there. But you can always, with something like this, when you get something you're not terribly impressed with, and I've seen other people doing this, you search for your pen of many colours, which I can't find. What have I done with it? Just talk amongst yourselves, here we are. And then you can fix it. Well, probably best if you wait for it to dry, Diane, honestly when all said and done, but you can. And that's where I got this rather interest. That's how I got this effect, by coming in on top of something that looked a bit ugh, and, um, and doing a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to turn the camera off now and sort myself out and then come back and do a bunch of stuff over one of these. I'm back and it's actually the next day. And in the meantime, I've sorted out the, uh, the things I've been doing recently into two groups. I've got the ones that I've done, which I've um, doodled on, and I've put those, or that I um, scratched into while I was printing. I've put those, those ones from the earliest efforts um, to the more recent efforts. I've put those in one folder and they're going to go in a drawer and be easy to access should I wish to look back at them. And then in this other folder, I've got all my backgrounds, which I'm going to practice on or maybe cut up to put into collage or um, into a junk journal or something like that. I'm starting to think I need to, to begin another journal because otherwise I'm going to have so much paper, I won't know what to do with it. So there we are. And I think it's always a good idea to try to have some slight system of organisation. I'm not terribly good at that, but um, just a suggestion to try to 
what's the word, organise things a little bit so that you don't go mad like the rest of the world. Um, so I've chosen this one. This is the one that I'm going to embellish and turn into something a little bit more interesting. And I think um, there are lots of different ways that this could be um, added to and uh, turned into something a little bit different. Um, so I was practising yesterday, so I know what I'm going to try to do. And, and I, I also think um, when you're practising, if you have a colour photocopier, make some copies and work on those first. And then you're not going to be upset if you ruin, or at least you think you've ruined what you were trying to do. Um, so that's what I did. I made lots of copies and I tried out various ideas. And as I was working on it, it suddenly came to me that these look like green roses. So I'm going to do that. And I've got here a um, Fudenosuke Tombow brush pen, which is a soft one. And it gives wide lines and narrow lines. And that's exactly what I want for this. So I'm just going to do spirals of varying thickness um, on here. And you can see straight away, it's also a good idea if you let your hand tremble a little bit. Um, it looks better then. And you can sort of go with the flow of uh, any lines and marks and things that are already there. So kind of feeding into the inspiration of your print. And just do these irregular, lumpy, bumpy spirals, which are really nice to, I, I, I enjoy doing these, I do. And yeah, I just, I thought this, this, this would be interesting. I mean, how, how wrong can you go? Not very. So we'll just do that on all of them. And not finished yet though. Do that, and then as soon as I did that, I thought, oh, there's a leaf. And there's another one. Hey, bingo. And another one. So we're just putting, <clears throat> now, putting leaves behind our roses. I got quite excited by this. I did, I thought, oh, do you know what? I didn't notice that there were leaves behind the roses. So we just go right ahead and pop them in like that. Look at that one. And like I say, if you make yourself some photocopies, if you have a copy, and if you don't have one for your birthday, they only cost about £50. Pounds. Um, most expensive part of a photocopier is the ink. We just uh, replenished the ink on, on ours, and it was more than <laughs> a pack of ink. It's more than the cost of the original photocopier. I mean, it's just crazy. And I know it might not be necessarily all that um, ecologically sound, but... Life's too short to stuff a mushroom, thank you. Um, so I did that, and then I thought what I need to do, and credit, where credit is due, I think Creation CC does a lot, or did, I don't know if she still does, a lot of dots, and there's something to be said for a dot. So, uh, I mean, other people do it as well, including me. So we'll just put in some dots, but you, you won't want to watch me doing dots all over. So I'm not going to do dots all over, just a few. And it just kind of adds a sort of je ne sais quoi, you know, um, a certain something we say in English. Uh, and the French say, and I don't know what, je ne sais quoi, et moi non plus, as they say. Oh, do you remember Jane Birkin? Ah, uh, je t'aime, moi non plus. I puzzled over those words for many years, trying to figure out what they meant. And eventually a French person said to me, oh, no, 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 I don't mean anything. <laughs> Waste of a life. Okay, so that's done. And as I said, I did prepare one earlier. And that's what it looks like when it's mounted on a card. So you just need to cut a piece of card in a rectangle like that, fold it in half, 
and then stick your creation on there and you have something perfectly acceptable that you could easily use as a gift card um, or a note lit or something along those lines. And then the second one that I'm going to demonstrate how differently you can um, make this happen um, is I'm going to use the pen as well, but first of all, I'm going to use, this is a pastel pencil, uh, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel. They're really quite nice. They're not too hard and not too soft and you can draw with them quite easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in on these green areas, dark green areas, I'm going to put in some five petaled uh, daisies, just scribbling them in any old how. And the good thing about this is you can adjust them if you think, oh, they're not coming out quite big enough. You can just go in and make them a little bit bigger. And where you have a mistake on the printing, you can just go over that and disguise it. So there we go. Five petaled daisies, and they're quite cute. And we put another, don't forget to the corners. There we are, so that's, that's that. And then we grab our pen, and you can do different things. You can do whatever you want, but um, what I did on the one I've already done was I, I outlined the daisies with the pen, but um, I don't know if I would do that again. So I'll just show you that I did do that. And then I thought dots is a good thing. So we carry the theme on. So what we would have then is a set. It would be a set of two, but you could go ahead and make lots of these, all very similar. And then you could have a set of half a dozen, which would be... You know, I mean, it's just, you can do so many things like this, if you want to, or you don't have to, just play and put it in a box somewhere after you've played. Just make something. Doesn't matter what you do with it afterwards, just make something. It's like Blue Peter, yes. We have to make things, it's a compulsion, you have to make things. So I'm just going to do this. And you could um, you could echo these, well, I think probably I will outline them. Just grab your sort of general, general outline, not, not uh, specific, just general. You could put little black centers if you want, and nice little focal points. I hope you've enjoyed finding out with me about um, how to use a jelly plate. It really is worth a try, and I believe they're very easy to make, so I think I might have a go at that myself too. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can see that there's all sorts of potential here. And this is the one that I did like this earlier. Turns out like that. So we've got that one and that one. And there's one more somewhere here. Here it is. This is from a different background. And this one's really cool too. That was a slightly larger originally. I just cut the best bit out of it and stuck that on the card too. So there we are. Happy painting, everybody. It's not exactly painting, but it's watercolour. Can't argue with that. It's definitely watercolour, guys. And <laughs> just goes to show. I hope you give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you found that interesting at all, we'll do more of it. If not, then we won't. But um, I love it. I'm going to be doing it in my private uh, study sessions. And uh, oh, yeah, by the way, do go over to Instagram, please. Um, if you haven't already followed us on Instagram, I wish you would. Um, we're trying to get a few more subscribers. Once we've got more followers on Instagram, we'll be able to do more things with Instagram. They cut out all the features. If you haven't got 10,000 um, followers, 
um, then you can't do the things that you want to do. And that's our situation at the moment. So if you've got a minute, go and look for Diane Anton Studio on Instagram and um, please follow us on there. You never know what you might find. Lots of pictures on there too. And Tamsin does all that. It's not me. I can't do social media. I'm a bit inhibited about that. I don't know. I can't take it in. My brain won't accept that. But it's easy to just click the button and follow. So I'll see you over there and uh, on here again in the next day or two. So happy painting, everybody, and bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>